Welcome back, everyone. We don't have a sponsor for this segment, do we? That's okay. We're going to talk about the Dapper Hacker. I want to give props to Security Weekly listener. Oh, crap. What was his name? I'm going to find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have fewer, I have fewer I, emails to go through than you I, do. I didn't. Oh, classy. What was his name? <laughs> now I feel bad that I didn't put his name in the show notes. But we will. We'll have his name. A listener wrote in whose name we'll find out. I don't want to give their full name, just like their first name, so they like they know it was them. But a listener wrote in and said, what about how you dress and security? And I'm like, well, that's kind of an interesting topic. And I'm like, I, I don't know if that's a full segment on the show. Ryan. Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, for writing in. Yeah, th- this was interesting how this yeah. evolved. I'm like, I don't know if this is a full segment or something that we just cover like in stories. And I forward it out to the entire Security Weekly crew. And there's how many emails in that chain? Uh, yeah. It, 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 start, it, started, it started out, you asked, I don't know if lame or not. And I think it was pretty consensus of lame. But. Yeah. And, and then <laughs> we're yeah, like, so no, <laughs> this isn't lame. Yeah. This is worth talking about. So. Um, we've added Michael Santarcangelo on the show. Welcome, Michael. Hey, guys. And uh, all the regular cast and crew is here. So I want to take some time to talk about this topic, which you kind of think about it like, well, how, what does it matter how you dress? Like, and most of us think of, well, yeah, when I'm in the boardroom, mm-hmm. I dress nice. When I'm working from home, I wear pajamas. Like, when why? I work in the bedroom, I... Yeah, why are you guys wear, what, talking about what you're wearing? Know, right? So um, I want to <laughs> credit uh, Mick Douglas, who's credited as naming this segment and providing some of the content therein. So thank you very much, Mick. Um, thank you, Mick. Yay, Mick. So as um, hackers or security professionals, how should we dress? I put together a couple of scenarios to kind of get us going on this topic. Toga. And I think Toga is an excellent example. And we'll get to the – I tried to hold the funny ones until the <laughs> end. And I'm glad that we started out by talking about togas. Oh, so that's funny. I was actually being serious. My bad. Oh, you actually wear a toga to – the boardroom. That would be interesting. Uh, yeah, this can they're only go very, down. They're very yeah. comfortable. <laughs> so uh, my first one was when you're on a penetration test and you're undercover. Not dumpster diving. I'm going to hold defi- that for now later. De- now define undercover. So you're doing a social... In- so the... Well, I should... Let me clarify that. The client does not want the employees to know that you are doing a penetration test. Are you on site or off site? On site. Okay, so you're on site. Someone has contracted you to come in and do a pen test, but they yes. haven't told the staff at large. Right. And social engineering is part of it. Maybe gotcha. some physical penetration testing, get access to areas that you're not supposed to have. Gotcha. That kind of thing. So no, this is Yeah, this isn't like you're going to meet your contact and he's going to give you a network jack to plug into. This no. Is, so this yeah. is this is a physical <laughs> right. physical assessment. Yeah. So I I just. I think you were really, you know, quick to point out, Larry, that in Mick too, that if you're dressing suspicious, you'll probably look suspicious, and we'll, yep. we'll get to a little bit of that later. But the point here, I think, is to dress the part. First of all, you have lots yep. of costumes. You can order uniforms online on eBay and the like, and fit the bill. If you got to be a UPS driver or a plumber for the day, you're going to want to wear that kind of attire. One, and one, go the plumber because you're going to have a really hard time getting FedEx and UPS uniforms. Yeah. Now. I don't want to. I, yeah. I have some props here, Paul. Yes, Jeff. I appreciate your props. I find <laughs> that this works very well. Yes, Jeff. And, for those listening uh, on audio, is wearing a hard hat. Yes. I find this works very well. I have plate, and I've got this to go along with it. A little bit of neon. He's got the neon mm-hmm. vest to go with it. And, okay. and um, I w- and I will note, Joff, that there are going to be people that say it right now. Both of those are too clean and do not have enough stickers. Yes. Oh, have stickers. Crap. I get Larry. I, I do also out, want to point out. I do also want to point out that. But Joff, he's got a little YMCA stuff going. on. That's what I was just going to say, Mike. I want to say on the weekends, right. Joff, you probably wear that while you're doing the YMCA. Which is nice, I think. It is. I do. I do wave my arms around wildly and <laughs> make funny symbols, <laughs> and 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 it's so metro. <sighs> I, mean, <laughs> yes. I I do want to point out too that you know <laughs> costumes aside, and we can come back to costumes if you want. But costumes aside. I think that when you're doing this undercover, I call it an undercover assignment. Mm-hmm. We know how that's where we define that. That dressing nice really helps. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just mm-hmm. doing a general, like you're like, you know, I'm not going to dress up as the plumber or the construction worker today. I just want to see where I can get social engineering. Dressing really nice helps. I, there's just something about the sociology of it all. Those that we've had on the show before that majored in sociology could tell you more. But dressing up and acting like you're supposed to be there in combination goes a long way. There's something about how people perceive you and will trust you more the nicer that you're dressed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
that's just what I've discovered. Um, so now on a penetration test, not undercover, my advice was try and fit in with the culture. Now, Larry and Joff specifically, you guys do more on-site penetration testing. Is that Am I Absolutely. still generally right on that one, you think? Absolutely. And, and I think it goes two ways. Um, and for me, it's always it's ideal to when you go on site to meet with a customer. Day one, you asked, and it's a, it's business casual jeans and polo. Mm. You always want to at least maybe on the first day go a step a step above. Step above, I agree. Yeah. Do the khakis. Yep. Do uh, a long sleeve collared shirt. Um, if it, if it's a business casual, but it's khakis and long sleeve collared shirt, maybe throw a tie with it. Throw you know, a tie with it. Step it up a little nice. Nice belt, sh- nice shoes, tie. Yep. Yeah. Just the first day. First day. To get the feel, to to give that feeling of knowledge, understanding, superiority. You know, and it's and it's very much a mental game. Yeah. Um, also, wear red. It's very similar tips to the first day of teaching, right? Yep. Absolutely. I typically do the same thing first day of teaching. I dress yep. nice. Yep. I wear red. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Now, day two, multi-day engagement, It's uh, I'd argue that it's okay to um, be more uh, appropriate to the environment. If everybody's wearing jeans and polos, yeah. do the jeans and the long sleeve button shirt. There or do the khakis and the polo. Yeah. Be, but still try to do a little bit better if you can. Yeah. No, Here's I, a tip, though, too. Just remember, if, you, if you're going in on day one, uh, like, I always like to err on the side of, first of all, I haven't worn a tie in 15 years. But I'll go in with like an Oxford shirt on and a jacket. If everybody else is wearing T-shirts, then at lunchtime, I lose the jacket. I roll up the sleeves. Mm-hmm. Everything's good. Mm-hmm. So if you go in with a tie, but you're the only one wearing a tie, lose the tie at lunch. Yep. Uh, open your sh- – so it's like, you know, if you're going to, quote, dress up, just make sure you've got some flexibility in how you do it so that you can match it. Because, you know, one of the things in the show notes that makes a lot of sense is if you overdress – that that creates some friction that you probably yep. would prefer to avoid. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That, now yeah. that's now that said, if you're going to be meeting with C level or yeah. vice president later in the day, don't go back and forth. Oh yeah, no. Once you lose a tie, the tie is gone. Yeah, yeah. No you contact. Don't. Well, yeah, unless think, you got a clip on. I mean, if you wear a clip on, then I guess you're probably okay. Well, there's a balance, right? You don't want to be give the pers- the impression of the young cocky computer. Hacker with no social mm-hmm. skills, and I, res- and I resent the term "metal faced hacker." So Thank Gary, you very much. Gary <laughs> McGraw, Gary McGraw used that term "metal faced yep. hacker." He's used it in a couple of his presentations. Why I put it in there yep. because that's some of the perception. Absolutely, right? absolutely, and and quite honestly, from from my perspective, having being that metal faced hacker a little bit, um, that we're actually come to uh, to be expected to have that particular look. And when I walk in the door and people are do the oh. Crap! Here's the metal-faced hacker, but I'm wearing khakis and yeah, an Oxford dre- yeah, shirt, yeah. and I can speak to the CSO or right. CISO and have no problem pulling yeah. that off and can talk Sheds intelligent. That persona. And, yeah, and yeah. they look at and they, they it quite often look right behind it, behind, yeah. past it. Yeah, exactly. The, that said, it's a great point. There have been a couple of times in my career where the customer has said, "Larry, we love you dearly. You're awesome. You did great work." You can talk to all of us, but I cannot have you come in and present to the board. Mm. That has happened once in my career. Interesting. That said, on the converse, I've also worked with some folks and been in the completely opposite. And it was actually about a week apart that, Larry, we really like the guy that from the company that came in and did our pen test and our audit and all of this stuff. But we can't have him present to the board. Oh, interesting. So it goes both. It's in a two way street, in, in dude. Fact, that's awesome. In fact, we saw some of your metadata research and we'd like to have you come present to the board. Right. And if you can stick around for another hour and do that presentation for our staff that didn't make it to the conference, we'd really like it. Nice. Well, so, so, you know, what you guys are hitting at, and this is actually something I, I've written about this, I mean, you know, a couple years ago. And, and oh, look out. We got a badass over here. No, not at all. But because actually, my my opinion on it's changed, and I, I want to amplify something that Good. that Larry's kind of brought up. There we it, go. At the end of the day, what really is going to matter at some point is your authenticity. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you're Larry, if you're Paul, if you're Jack, if you're Joff, if you've been doing this for a while and you've got that reputation, then things change a little bit. Whereas if you're 
if you're new into the field or you're a little less known, you, you need to play it a little bit differently mm -hmm. less you get labeled because we can fight about it, but people are going to continue to label us. And one of the things that we see a lot of times is people say, well, they don't take me seriously. They don't respect me as a leader. They don't want to. Well, of course not. You're not dressing like them. You're not mm -hmm. acting like them. You're not talking like mm -hmm. them. But you can get to a place too where you can walk into it. Like I'm thinking about events that I've been to where the speaker shows up in jeans and a t-shirt, but they blow the doors open. They're fantastic. It's wonderful. And then, and then the next speaker's got a suit on and it's tailored fantastically. And it's the most boring, dull thing I've ever heard in my life. And I, I can't wait to leave. And so, you know, yeah, it's interesting. It's a good point. It, it, mm -hmm. But there's, but as we're, what we're parsing here is there's a, there's a balance to it. So, you know, I like the idea of err on the side of fitting in, but I think the point that we're, we're not making, especially, I mean, obviously if you're penetration testing undercover and you need to blend in and you're trying to do something specific, there's a set of rules for that. But otherwise, whether you're presenting or you're going day to day, you want to fit in with everybody else, but you also... There, there's nothing wrong with having a sense of style. Um, and I think that we have this tendency to forget that. We, we like to wear conference T-shirts and we like to wear jeans. I mean, I guess if that's your sense of style, it works. I mean, there's a lot of really famous people in history that have had fairly horrible style. But I don't think there's anything wrong with style. And by the way, we see this a lot. There's a lot of folks at security conferences that have absolutely fantastic hats or nifty ties, really cool shoes. You know, So I think there's something you can do that kind of sets you apart. But at some level keep in mind too that you need to be authentic that yeah yes well the, you know, go, go ahead jack I, I was gonna say one of the things um rather than try to steer folks in any particular direction just stop and think about stop and think about the situation because sometimes uh, what you want to do is be underestimated you know it's one true. of my one of my favorite stories was i i you know back in my car business days when i was you know, midnight I would start doing transmission repairs because we didn't have anybody that was good with automatic transmissions, even though I was running the networks for the chain of dealers and a bunch of other businesses the folks owned. Um, you know, I showed up for a meeting with a uh, with a computer system vendor, um, crawled out of my ratty rust bucket truck uh, in, you know, car hearts with holes in the knees and uh, – um, you know, oil stained, whatever, because they said, can you come? I'm like, I am Fuck. under a plow truck. Uh, but I said, you know, let's <laughs> do this. And what was what was fantastic was they told me, you know, they made f the, the computer guys made fun of me as I was walking in because they didn't. I walked in and we sat down and they start the meeting. And it was great because they had no. Uh, they completely underestimated me. Yep. And then when I said we probably shouldn't use them for web services because I showed them everything behind what was supposedly a uh, secured uh, website because they put uh, what was it? It was old. It was an old IIS, and they they only put authentication on the landing page. So the entire rest of their web properties including development stuff and confidential stuff, uh, didn't have any permissions applied to it. So if you went to the U URL where you had to log in, you had to log in. But if you went to any other URL, all the links were live. Um, and then I started just disassembling it further and further. And, the, you know, the guys in the three-piece sales weasel suits were just about in tears as they left knowing that um, they, they'd been made to look like the asses they were. But you have to think knowing about Knowing they weren't it. making their sales quota. Oh, yeah. It's yep. like, not only that, uh, before you get to your car, I'm going to call my buddies so they don't have to put up with your crap either. But <laughs> that only works if, <laughs> if there's a reason for it, right? I mean, if it makes sense. Um, you know, in uh, the point about whether or not you have, a, uh, whether or not folks know you, right? I mean, I get, if I put on a suit and tie, people make fun of me because that's <laughs> not me, right? You know, and I'll do it for... Um, Info Security Europe, because it's in London, which is a very conservative and business place, and Absolutely. it's a business conference. Know your audience. And, you, you know, it, Space Rogue and I were in black suits with blue ties at Info Security Europe because that was the audience. Yep. Now, I mean, people came to the booth and made fun of us, but what was really funny, I, I'll, I'll spare him the public embarrassment, but a, an acquaintance of, of ours that's in the business, not a direct competitor, but somebody else in the security business, 
um, came up and made fun of me. And I looked at him and realized that for the first time in his life, I was seeing him in a suit and tie as well. And I said, wait. And he's like, yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's London. It's InfoSec. We got we to gotta do this, right? I'm like, yes, we do. Uh, wait, so teapot, kettle black. Exactly. But it's, um, is there, is there a reason for wearing what you wear? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, an interesting example that Mick brought up, and I said, you know, hey, when you're dumpster diving, you should be wearing all black. And Larry's like, absolutely not. That's just going to get you arrested because if they yep. see someone dressed I, in all black, yeah, and, and, you're not and, Steve Jobs. Yeah. And yeah. if and if not arrested, you're going to send spend an hour in the back of a police car answering yep. all sorts of questions about why you're in the back of this shopping mall business. You name it, poking around the dumpsters, wearing all black. As um, they search your phone, search your laptop, yeah. figure search, out search anything your, else. Search your pockets for anything that can be construed as a burglary tool. Yeah. So what Mick says he likes to do is dress in like dressed up business casual, like a sport coat, button down yeah. shirt, and some khakis, and like hang a sport coat over the side of the dumpster and go dumpster diving. That way, if he does get caught, he's like, dude, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Can I borrow your flashlight? I lost my earring, you, my you cell phone, or something. Make sure that you have elbow patches and a pipe. Yeah. That, that <laughs> well, solid. The other. I, like um, I want a smoking I lost jacket. My thesis. <laughs> I, I need a smoking yeah, exactly. jacket. Not that it's, I've it's done a lot of physical pin tests, but you, if you happen to be an old bearded dude like me, you can go completely opposite. But it has to. You have to have a story that goes with it. Yes. So if you look like um, you're looking for a meal in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> you've and you've got that, nothing you? in your pockets, right? You yep. got six. You you got four dollars in your pockets and crumpled ones, and you have a vague smell of cheap gin. Um, you know the wow. worst that's going to happen that's is you. <laughs> no, no, wait. The hottest part for Jack is that it has to be cheap gin. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's right. That's it's like my uh, joke about San Francisco. I love San Francisco. I just wish people would let me finish my cup of coffee before they stuff money in it. <laughs> <laughs> Now that said, Jack, that is absolutely true, and I found more than my fair share of sandwiches and dumpsters. The one of the last physical pen tests, no, not one of the last ones, but one a couple back ago. Um, uh, Darren and I were actually doing a physical pen test, and uh, um, we we show up to the company, and it was a bank, and sure enough. It's a bank holiday, and nobody's at the office. So, like, well, uh, great. We've got 12 branches that we need to physical pen test while we're here. So, guess what we're doing today? Dumpster diving. Dumpster diving and physical pen test in all the bank branches. And it was 12 degrees Ooh. in February and windy. And oh. Yeah, but you're in the dumpster, though. And I got to tell you, it's better being 12 degrees than 112 degrees. Yeah, I was yes. just going to say, <laughs> yes. It's, 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 uh, yes. So yeah, southern Florida, 112 degrees and 112 percent humidity. Yeah, you don't want to be in the dumpster in that. <laughs> you know, I, I just I want to bring it back to a point that that I think Jack made really uh, artfully, but I just want to amplify it again. Be intentional. Th like your clothing and your appearance shouldn't be an afterthought. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, if you do it, you do right. do it. And and if you wanna if you wanna be a little outside of the norm, own it. That's fine. Hey, you know, because if I were to be an evil bad guy and break into the NSA, I would totally dress as a woman because that <laughs> apparently <laughs> oh, yeah. that works it, for some people. Yeah, it works at crashing into a fence and getting shot. So the, the <laughs> re reference behind I mean, that is Paul men. Shaves his legs and I saw this headline today, and men disguised as women stormed the NSA headquarters. So two men dressed as women, nonetheless attempted to smash through a checkpoint and into their data center complex using a stolen Ford Explorer. Now, there's a lot of things wrong with this. First of all, I don't understand how a man dressing as a woman helps you if your plan is to steal a car and then smash through a checkpoint at NSA headquarters. I don't understand you know, how that helps you. The advantage of the Ford Explorer, though, Jack will attest to this, U-Haul uh, won't let you uh, tow a trailer behind it. So they were probably yeah, yeah. thinking ahead. That's true. You know, and I, you know, I think Fine you know, automobiles. it's not a very stealthy way to break into the NSA, although they were, yeah. they were found to be very fashionable. So, I but mean, they, they forgot to shave. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of yeah. look like Paul. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Because charge the gate at Fort Meade dressed as women with guns and drugs in a stolen car is not going to cause any problems at all. Other than that death and the other one, uh, I have a hunch that 
about 30 years from now when he's still in prison. Yeah. He'll be, he'll be wishing he was the one that took the fatal rounds. Yeah. I, I can imagine and, they're like, and, sir, and put your hands a woman. up. Yeah. <laughs> sir, put your hands up. They're like, wait, oh, I thought this was the FBI headquarters. Shit. Can you give yeah. me directions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, how wasted, uh, uh, that's how wasted. That's how wasted they had to be to dress as women to drive through the NSA checkpoint. We, so this we is need an to get our of fashion from, gone wrong in IT. Yes, yeah, we need to get our friends from the loft to tell us the. Yeah, it reminded me of that, Jack. The Fort Meade story. Maybe they were dressed as women. There's, Maybe there's there a are, trend. There are other ways to get past those checkpoints without getting shot. Yep, and without cross dressing. So uh, cons, I find when now, I go now to the, a, now the funny ones. Yeah, the funny ones. When I go to security cons, I think it's kind of fun to try and like outdo your peers. So I think mohawks, kilts, tactical gear with lots of patches, women clothing on men and men's clothing on women. There's really no rules. It's a chance to let loose and mm -hmm. be yourself. Show your just, inner nerd. Yeah, just be fashionable. I really appreciate that. I have to admit, when I first went to security cons, I was a little taken back seeing Bruce Potter in a dress. But then I come to understand that... that man, it, he was sexy. He was, he was <laughs> sexy. He was sexy. But, it, you know, it's part of the culture, and I think a really... You know, my, my family's like... So, I, you know, uh, those of you who saw me at DerbyCon, I had the kilt on. Because, like, I want to partake in this. Like, this is fun. It mm -hmm. was so... It was fun. And it's a chance to do and, and dress like you normally wouldn't. But then I was like, <laughs> I got this kilt. I'm like, I got to wear it, mm -hmm. right? So it's having a Christmas Eve party at my house. And I'm like, I'm rocking kilt. my kilt. My family's like... They just could not get it through their brains. It was the most <laughs> entertaining thing to ever see. They're like, why on earth are you wearing a kilt? I'm like, because. Because it's I'm comfortable. Just, yeah, because I, I, I like can't. it. So, so back, to, back to that point about having a reason for doing what you do. Uh, last year at RSA, I went to a black tie event in a tuxedo. And kilt. And kilt. There you go. And, yes. and top hat. And it was because it was something that I thought. Uh, I wanted to have fun with, and right. what was really what was really hysterical to the other point about whether you know whether you have a whether you're known was the reactions uh, basically fell into two camps. What the hell is that? Or what the oh, it's just Jack. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So and, and that and that's funny too. We talk about that. You know, we talk about getting to know your audience uh, and, and that type of stuff. So the last time I taught at a, an event for Sands was in Las Vegas last end of last year. Yeah. Um, for a live event, and uh, day one, red shirt, right? Khakis, red shirt, nice shoes, belt. Uh, day two. Don't you watch Star Trek? You can't wear a red shirt. Same same thing. Blue shirt. Day three, black shirt. Day four, you start to get into the whatever you know. Day four, day yeah, five, t-shirt, jeans. No, yeah. yeah, still khakis and a and a and a Oxford shirt. Uh, but on day six, day six is the, the shorter last day. day sh the yeah. last day and shorter day. They've gotten to know my sense of humor. Yeah, they, they know you much better. They've, yeah. got, they've got intimate interaction with yes. me for five days. Um, day six oh, was uh, <laughs> was tactical kilt and polo. Nice. <laughs> and it was totally expected by and that point. And they showed up and they're like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah, and yeah. wow, we didn't know you had that many tattoos. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, so working from home, pajamas are certainly the trend here. Pants are optional. Changing your clothes every day is certainly not a requirement. Hell, I've been wearing these pants for a week. Yeah, every week, well, every day. Well, when I wear, I've been wearing pants. Whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Work from home is... <laughs> I uh, was, you know, I work here in the studio now, so I tend to actually dress up sometimes. Because you actually have to go out of the door. I have to door. leave the house, yeah, yeah which, I, which I enjoy greatly. But when I was working from home full time, yeah, lucky if my my wife be like, didn't you, are those your pajamas from two, I'm like, pajamas, work clothes, it's all the same now. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know what? My, my wife, she drives me nuts sometimes because, well, the new she's your wife. wives do that. But she's like, you make so That's much laundry. Guy. I'm like, how do I make so much laundry? I wear one pair of pants every two weeks. And like in the summertime, it's a T-shirt and mm -hmm. socks. S you change your clothes like two times a day right. and uh, underwear and bras. And how do it I make laundry? the laundry? It saves laundry. Yeah. How, how, do I, how do I? Oh, right. Wintertime, like hoodies. And yeah, yeah I get it. It fills up the laundry basket. But we hack naked because we can. And... Um, well, began because that's the right thing. Because it's the right thing. It's to the do. best to show up right. to staff meetings that way. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, <laughs> then you tell. I'm everybody. so glad I don't go to your staff meetings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, believe oh. me, it's a staff it's meeting, a staff all right. Meeting, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, travel. I don't know. This was kind of the last one that was like way off topic. I, 
I like to wear my cargo pants with lots of pockets just to keep TSA on their toes. Because if you ever go through the x-ray machines in like your 511 mm -hmm. or Blackhawk tactical pants, every single time, it's the only time, every single time like clockwork, you will be stopped at TSA and they will feel your legs and your pockets is if you wear 511 or, tactical pants. Or, or you could be Jason the Street and they could punch you in the nuts. Or <laughs> you might get cock punched. <laughs> yes. So that's my... It is just, convenient just, in dirty. Yeah, is that because you want them be to aware. feel your legs? It is because yeah, yeah. I want them to feel me. And I, if you wear the tactical shirts that have pockets and stuff, they feel your chest too. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Every time, like clockwork. Now, I had Paul's, the auto. Paul's I, tips for enjoying travel. That's right. <laughs> I had the auto open <laughs> knife. It was like a four inch blade that I left in my back. They didn't find that, but it damn it, it, they felt my damn pants every time. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, you, Paul, you have an interesting the, point because if you want to get felt up at TSA, you wear those pants, but it also kind of goes back to every topic we've talked about. Your clothing determines what you want to get out of that situation. It's a very basic kind of principle of social engineering. It's all about projecting an image. So you wear what you want to get out of it. If you're walking into an office, you wear a suit. If you're walking into a CO, you wear a hard hat. So you all take context into that, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes from, you know, from your basic physical pen test all up to the boardroom. It's a, if we were talking about an IT perspective, it's all about what you wear to project mm -hmm. what you want to get out of it. Yep. So wait, so that's, you're why, the that's is why a good Jack, idea or a bad idea? That's why Jack likes to wear his kilt through TSA and get the freedom fondle. Like get more out of that experience. I, so I've, yet, you want I've yet to do that, but I really want to. What I really want to do <laughs> really is one of the to. times when I'm flying late in the year, wear one of my Father Christmas robes and just let. It, make, it, make sure it smells like cheap gin first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> opt out, and uh, you know, especially if I ever like go to like Orlando, oh, oh, oh. right? Go to Orlando in mid December, right? So it'll be an airport full of children, and they'll be fondling uh, Santa's junk or something. It'd be it'd be great. <laughs> Mommy, and, 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 why and, are they doing that to Santa? And, and make sure you're you're back there. Ho ho ho! The yeah. whole time. You gotta, yeah. you, you, you gotta enjoy oh, that's that. Terrible. <laughs> I'm never going to forget that. That's <laughs> Where's Mrs. Claus? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Do it again. <laughs> Who are you calling a hoe? <laughs> All right. Well, that... Uh, oh, so on, on the travel thing, yep, I, I, one find, last thing. I find that I like to go. Um, be relatively comfortable... Um, and especially if I don't have to meet with the client the same day I'm traveling, so like a pair of cargo pants and maybe a t-shirt. And I did notice for a while that when I have like a witty t-shirt on, TSA would actually stop me and ask to read my t-shirt. Because for a while they were very offended by political t-shirts and, and all that type of stuff. Which is all the more reason to wear them. Exactly. And my, none of my stuff was political. It was humorous. And But still, the fact, I visibly noted for about a three-month period that when I was wearing a t-shirt with some saying on it or something, they physically stopped me and asked to read it. So they, the, they, get, they get confused. They're, they're not... I wore a t-shirt from a company that competes with um, Rapey Scan and the other scanners that they use. Mm. Except they make the really good stuff, not the shit that TSA uses. And somebody asked what it meant, and I said, when you actually care about this shit, you buy this instead of the crap that they make you use. Uh, and the the manager did what it did, to, but, but the uh, you know the manager was not pleased with that. And I said, if you've got Google on your phone, I challenge you. And before I finished my freedom fondle, he had walked away with his head down. It was kind of funny. I'm not going to. I'm not going to name the company or how it is I had their T-shirt because it's giving it away too much. An, it, well, it was an incident response uh, behavior. So uh, they make really good products, but don't secure their shit well. But you, you know, have a reason and don't. You know, you know, I mean, if you want to offend them, go for it. But know that. Know that you better show up at the airport a few hours early if you're going to offend <laughs> TSA for fun. All right. <sighs> All right. So with that, we're going to wrap up this segment, come back and talk about the stories for this week. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 